there's a mystery to songwriting, especially when you write a lot of songs. And the mystery is where they come from. And you can look back on songs written 10 years ago. You might or might not remember where the idea came. Usually from the lyrics, yeah, you can have a good idea. And I tend to take notes nowadays, so I remember the, the source idea. But the music for me remains a mystery. How is it you sit down at the piano, you have your set of lyrics there in front of you, and you start tinkling around and trying to find uh, a melody idea to start with. And sometimes inside half an hour, um, sometimes you can have, there's a song on the Ellen Cosgrove album called Without Another Word. And that melody, which is quite intricate, and it was complete, no more work needed after half an hour. And you say to yourself, where did that come from? I have a pretty definite system for songwriting. I always write the lyrics in advance, usually way in advance, and then I put the words to music much later. Um, I write lyrics often when I'm on holidays. I go to Peru once a year. I come back usually with about 10 sets of lyrics from that trip. Um, I go to Spain for a little over a week in the summer, and I come back with maybe five or six sets of lyrics then. Um, at home I write in uh, coffee shops, and sometimes at gigs when I'm waiting for the main act to start. In fact, at the Sugar Club gig not so long ago, um, I wrote three sets of lyrics. Um, I hope that's not a terrible recommendation for the band. Um, at home and then when the mood strikes me, um, I sit down with the piano, pick one of the sets of lyrics, more or less at random, decide whether I'm going to write in a um, country flavor, dance flavor or whatever, and work on the track for about uh, 20 minutes, half an hour. Sometimes a lot of the lyrics, uh, a lot of the melody will um, come to me fairly quickly. Sometimes it requires two, three, four sessions, but not long sessions, 20 minutes, half an hour at a time. And then when the song is complete, I record a demo. Uh, the demo will consist of just three tracks, the vocal, piano backing, and strings. I have a very good orchestral strings effect on my Roland digital keyboard. There's a dog on the street, lost his owner. I began writing songs as a hobby, as a lot of people do, and it took me a while to find the voice or particular quality or mood. Um, I suppose you, you that I wanted to achieve. You talk about songwriters that are very distinctive say someone like Randy Newman and you can recognize the tone of the piano and uh, the quality that he brings to the, the vocals um, and it takes a while to establish that and um, even when I had an idea of what I wanted to do I think it took me another decade before I could say that that's very clearly defined now and people would say oh yeah that's Sean's style and, and even after that again it took me even more time to become really professional in my overall approach to composing. So if I was asked what advice would I give to a budding songwriter, I'd say write as much as you can so that your talent and your voice has a chance to develop. If your song output is low, you get nowhere. In another context, uh, the golfer Tony Jackson used to say, the more I practiced, the luckier I got. In other words, he was winning more tournaments, but it was practice, practice, practice. I've been asked a few times uh, what inspired the lyrics of Making the Most of Love, which is the first single of the Weekend Special album. After thinking about this question, I've noticed that a few songs I've written have been about the theme of love arriving relatively late in life. Um, and I think there is this difficulty in relationships where you want so many things to be kind of coming together. Um, in the romance, uh, you want friendship, you want trust, you want confidence, you want fun, you want a person to be interesting, you want loads of things, plus romance as the icing on the cake. Um, and it's quite difficult to get those things together. And uh, that's what the song Making the Most of Love is about. Full-blooded love, satisfying love arrives 
very late in life. Um, I remember that the kickoff point for the lyrics was this phrase, I'd already parked my dreams. I don't know where that came from. Um, and the girl's dreams, they're not discarded, they're simply parked, and I kind of like that idea. Um, and then when everything uh, seems hopeless, here you are, kind of knocking at my door. Um, so it's, it's a very optimistic song. A lot of the romantic songs that I write are kind of underlying, they're really sad, and there's not going to be a satisfactory resolution. There's usually the person knowing that uh, things are not going to work out, and there's a kind of a wisdom there. But this particular song, Making the Most of Love, things are working out happily, and um, Darian Chase, our singer, is singing with great gusto. Um, I was resigned, life was on hold, I walked off the stage, but here you are now knocking at the door and I'm really going to make the most of love. But here you are, looking for love. I remember my tutor in Kynemore College where I did a music performance course, probably the best 320 euro in my life I ever invested, and seven or eight months of my time. Um, he was very keen that the students would decide before the end of the year is music going to be a pastime for me, an enthusiastic hobby, but I realise that I don't have the talent or the work ethic to uh, become successful in the business. Um, that's a, a major decision to make, but it's important to make it. A hobby, a pastime can give you years, decades, decades and decades of uh, enjoyable leisure time pursuits. Music is a fabulous pastime to have and if you're able to tinker around a little composing, great. Um, but you're in a different realm. You're in a realm of output. Productivity is everything in the music business, coupled with professionalism, dependability. A person who isn't as good a composer will get more work than someone who's a great composer and is unreliable and arrives late, doesn't meet deadlines. Drink the good wine to the fall. I think as a songwriter, you don't tend to focus on, oh, that's the best song I've ever written, I'll never write one as good as that. The coming songs, the songs you're working on, are always the ones that are you're really interested in at the moment. Uh, over a perspective of time, you can say, that's a stronger song than the other, but you're invested in them all and a song that's 50% or 70% there can always be improved. I just continue to churn them out and then enjoy putting them in a definitive format in the studio. That's really satisfying and you know, really gifted producers can add so much at that stage and add touches that make a good song or sound really great.